People seem to be staying in toxic relationships with the notion that they are staying with their twin flame, that they have this big challenge. So today at queenbeing.com, we're talking about twin flames. So from mytwinflamelove.com, here is a basic definition. True twin flames are the highest spiritual love relationship possible between two people. True twin relationships are steeped in pure love, joy, companionship, support, protection, adoration, adventure, wonder, awesomeness, and virtues, all wrapped up in an amazing feeling found in your true twin flame's arms through the physical act of sacred love, so on and so forth. A narcissistic false twin has no problems lying to you, whereas a true twin flame would never do this. Another author who identifies herself as Cinderella Anabu on medium.com says that there's such a thing as a false twin flame and that's the type of person who kind of shows up in your life to teach you a lesson that you need at that time but that that's not really your twin flame. She says that by going through this, by seeking out people like this, we are kind of attempting to work through our own traumas from childhood or maybe even past lives and to make sense of who we truly are. She says the false twin flame is the narcissist and the twin flame victim is the empath. She basically goes on to describe the relationship between a narcissist and, a, and an empath as we've done repeatedly here on this channel. But where she sort of deviates from our theory here is that she says the twin flame victim and the, the false twin flame have the same core wound. Well, I do think that's kind of true in some cases because very often you will have a narcissistic parent who has both a narcissist and an empath or both a narcissist and at least a non-narcissist. It comes down to the fact that both the false twin flame and the victim twin flame or the narcissist and the empath are both living in fear of being alone, fear of abandonment due to the core wound from childhood that they probably both have. There are similarities between twin flame love and narcissistic love. The instant twin flame connection is similar to the euphoric love feeling of a narcissistic relationship, especially during the love bomb phase which is why it's important to know the difference and spot all these red flags so that you don't end up in an abusive cycle with a narcissist thinking that they are your twin flame when in actuality they are what we call a false twin flame which is much more common than a real twin flame. So my question is, do you think that twin flames exist or not? And if you think that they do exist, do you think that a twin flame can also be an abuser? Now, some of the material that I read in my research does say that you might suffer abuse from your twin flame, which in my opinion might kind of negate the whole thing. But the idea behind this is that the twin flame challenges you to let go of things that are holding you back as a soul, as a, as a person, and it kind of encourages you to move forward in your life. So let's talk about that a little bit. So here's the thing about a twin flame relationship. There's a lot of poetic discussion about it on the internet. I know, you're shocked. People say it can't be contained. It's so passionate, it's deep. There are noted stages of the twin flame relationship. And what's ironic about them is that a lot of these stages look eerily familiar to a toxic relationship. A true twin flame will have no problems committing to you. Once you've reached union of the twin flame journey, you will know exactly where you stand with them. No confusion, no games. On the other hand, with a narcissist, they will never fully commit to just one person. Very often people seem to be staying in toxic relationships with the notion that they are staying with their twin flame, that they have this big challenge. So there's a website called Loner Wolf and it's all, it seems like it has a lot of twin flame material on it. It's very interesting. And believe me, I truly want to believe in things like twin flames. But after having gone through what I've gone through, I have to wonder if it isn't just an excuse, like I said, to kind of stay in one of these toxic relationships. According to the site's author, Althea Luna, while well, twin flames, I guess, can be positive for you. There are certain stages that come through every twin flame relationship. And she says that every relationship is different and she implies that they're all very complicated, but that they all go through this one particular sort of series of phases. She says that stage one is yearning for the one, you know, when you just kind of know that someone's out there for you. And then stage two is that you kind of catch a glimpse of that person. You kind of figure, hmm, I think I might marry that person. Or you'll hear people say a lot of the time, I knew that first time I saw 
saw that person, I was going to marry them. This is stage two of the twin flame relationship. They catch a glimpse of that person. She says in stage three, it's all about falling in love. You fall hard and you fall fast. Does that sound like anything you might recognize from the toxic relationship cycle? Love bombing, idealization, all of that kind of stuff. Then she says in stage four, that's when the fairy tale relationship happens. Well, of course, that's in a toxic relationship. It's the idealization and love bombing phase kind of continuing and playing out. Well, then she gets to stage five where she's talking about trouble in paradise. Things are getting hard. Things are getting difficult. This is the time when everything kind of gets explosive. And she says, if you are someone who's kind of quiet and introverted, well, then your, your twin flame must be the opposite, must be a controlling, explosive. She says, if one twin flame is kind of reserved, the other one is kind of extroverted and arrogant. She says our twin flames challenge us. They rile up our insecurities and we find it infuriating and frustrating and, and it makes us feel less than. But then she points out that, well, there's all of this growth that happens during this stuff, so it's okay. You know, all the growth makes it okay. She says we're not really seeing ourselves as we are unless we're having someone kind of throw ourselves back in our face, I guess is the, the general idea. But then she adds, well, but this is really hard to realize when you're kind of still going through all of these little bumps in the relationship, the turbulence. Then she talks about stage six being the runner and the chaser, where I guess one of the people in the relationship or in the potential relationship, you know, runs away and the other person chases that person and this may go back and forth in varying iterations. She says, in some cases, the relationship is strengthened, in some cases, it's weakened. Now, in my opinion, maybe this is where we go through the whole, you know, devalue and discard and then the hoovering phase where we get sucked back in. Does that sound familiar? Does that sound like the same kind of concept to you? Then she says, stage seven is the surrender and the dissolution. And she says, that's basically where in a twin flame relationship, you both kind of let your ego down and you both kind of open up to each other and you may either stay together or not but this is the point at which in her theory the relationship kind of starts to come together one way or another and then she says in stage eight you get to oneness where you're together you're one whole thing because I guess the idea being that a twin flame is one soul that at some point in its existence split into two and each side of that or half of that soul became a separate soul the idea being that once you find that person and you work out all your issues you you have a whole person or a whole self again now, I don't know about you, but to me, that sounds great. You know, wouldn't it be amazing if there were some blessed end to all of this and that we were suddenly both on the same page and everything was perfect and wonderful, right? Wouldn't that be perfect? Now, during a live stream with Dana Morningstar, this, like I said, this subject was brought up and I kind of pulled up this article as we were talking from Thought Catalog written by an author named Brianna Wiest. And this was called 18 Signs That You Are Experiencing What's Called a Twin Flame Relationship. Now, I'm just gonna pull out a couple of those signs for you right now. I'll try to remember to link to the article in the description below for you. One of the first signs that she mentions is that you're intensely drawn to the person. They've opened you up to a whole new way of thinking. Now that can be positive and negative, but it could also look like somebody walking on your boundaries, right? Changing your boundaries for you. Then she mentions they happen to kind of come in and out of your life. Sounds a lot like the devalue discard phase and the hoovering for the coming back in. In fact, in one of the line items in the article is actually that you keep going back to them, which is kind of, again, the hoovering phase. She talks about the fact that the bond with that person feels instantaneous and that the relationship moves really quickly, which of course sounds a lot like love bombing and idealization again. She says, while you get a whole bunch of passion and excitement with that person, you have an equal amount of stress and worry with that person. She says the relationship is tumultuous at times. She says this is because that person is trying to sort of show you all the bad things about yourself you're supposed to fix. She also mentions that you feel very attuned to your twin flame and she says that you can sort of feel what they're feeling and what they're thinking and things like this, almost like you're one. Well, if you think about a relationship with a narcissist, when you've been in one long enough, you literally base your whole life around the fact you need to learn to anticipate their thoughts and feelings. You need to learn to know how to act in order for them to react properly to you. And even then, it doesn't always work. And then, of course, the fact that they show you what you most desire as well as what you most fear, which makes it even more like a narcissist relationship. The theory is, it goes on and on, you know, but what I'm going to wrap this little section up with is something that was said by a clairvoyant who is also a trained relationship counselor, life coach, and an ordained minister. Her name is Anna Maria Gabriel. She says that because so often we mistake a toxic person for our twin flame, she will never tell anyone who asks for her advice that they are with the person they should spend their life with. She says that a lot of times people will literally tell her that they want to stay in that relationship because they believe that's their soulmate or their twin flame, which apparently are two different things, but that she herself as a clairvoyant, as a psychic, as a coach, doesn't believe that it's right for her to tell people, yeah, I think that's your 
your soulmate or that's your twin flame because then she thinks that's you know, sort of affecting their free will and not allowing them to choose for themselves. Then she goes on to advise people to see how that person makes you feel and, and to recognize that just because you once thought that person was your twin flame or was your soulmate doesn't mean they really are. Whether you believe in the concept of soulmates and twin flames or not, you have to give yourself a little grace. If you are in a relationship with someone who is abusing you, can you learn lessons from it? Can you evolve because of it? Absolutely. But it doesn't mean that you need to stay in that relationship. Once you realize what you're dealing with, you have every right to wrap that thing up. Now, I'm going to really quickly go over with you a few of the responses that were left by the Spanily when I pulled them on my YouTube community tab, as well as in the Span group on Facebook. So take a look. So I asked everybody, do you believe in twin flames? And if yes, could that person also be a narcissist? As you can see here, 41% said, yes, I believe, and they can be. 13% said, yeah, I believe, and they can't be. 25% said, no, it's just a way to justify staying. 13% said there's no such thing as twin flames. And of course, others left comments below. Over on Facebook, it was a little bit different, similar similar mix we ended up with, but we're not going to be able to talk about the actual numbers on Facebook because it is a private anonymous site. Let's just take a look at some of these from YouTube. We have Daniel Lawson saying, no, it's just a way to justify. He said he used to think the same way, but they're fakes. Monica North says, no. You are cool says, yes. Now here's an interesting comment I want to share with you. And this is kind of how I feel about it. Ring Adding says, I think the idea of twin flame is sweet and romantic, but if your compass is damaged, if you were abused and grew up surrounded by unhealthy relations, believing in twin flames can be dangerous as it could justify abuse and maltreatment. Vulnerable people can be too open to suggestion, very forgiving and hopeful in a fairy tale ending. They may have the idea that they can heal or fix the abuser if they just love them more, gave them themselves more. I love spiritual philosophies and I believe in energies and vibration, but this is a potentially catastrophic thought for a recovering survivor of abuse. Your twin flame will treat you well. The timing and relation will be seamless and they would not hurt you in any way. So let me just in a nutshell tell you what I think. I think that I wish that in every situation we could be certain that we were with our soulmate or our twin flame. Again, those two things are different according to most people and I'm not going to go into all that today, but if you'd like me to, let me know in the comments and I will do a video on the difference between a soulmate and a twin flame. But for today's video, what I want you to know is this. Very often, especially those of us who are kind of spiritual, kind of woo-woo a little bit here and there, it might seem beautiful to us, the concept. It seems beautiful to me. It might seem like if that's our twin flame that could change our world, everything could be amazing. Things could get really good, right? We could just work through this hard part and then we'll be, you know, go through the spiritual journey and do the work and we'll be okay. Well, I think that's true up to a point. But what I don't think is that you're meant to stay with someone who abuses you. What I know for sure about narcissists is that they don't change. So whatever you do, please don't use the fact that you believe you're in a relationship with your twin flame as an excuse to tolerate abuse. If you're being abused, get out. Don't stay with someone because you believe that the universe handed them to you or that you manifested them. This brings me to the question of the day. And the question of the day is, do you believe in twin flames? And if you do, do you believe that a twin flame could be a narcissist? If so, do you believe that you have a responsibility to stay in a toxic relationship with someone who you believe is your twin flame? Or are you more like me where you think it would be really great if that was true, but you should never use anything as an excuse to tolerate abuse? Tell me your thoughts, share your questions, share your ideas in the comment section below and let's talk about it. As always, thank you so much for being a part of my day and a part of my life. And hey, thanks for letting me be a part of yours. It really does mean a lot to me. Now, before I go, make sure you take a look at the videos I'm leaving for you right here and right here. And while you're here, hit that subscribe button right there so we can stay connected and continue on this healing journey together. I'll see you soon.